Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Sierra Flores and I am the Everyday Educator. And so for today's topic, it's all about discussions in Canvas. And so if that's something you're interested in, stick around because I'm about to give you all of that info right now. And so one way we can add a discussion is to click on the discussions tab and then you'll see there's a button here and it allows you to add a discussion. When you do it this way, yes, you'll have the discussion, but it's not linked anywhere. You just kind of have an open discussion that's just kind of floating around. And so if you want it, you'll have to click specifically on discussions to get to that discussion. Another way that you can create a discussion for your kids is to go home and actually link this discussion to the module that they're in. So I'm in my sandbox. And so these are practice activities that I've created. And so let's say that this is my math class and I really want this discussion to be centered around math. Well, I want to put that discussion in my math module. So that's why I'm going to come here and I'm going to add in a discussion. And it's gonna be a brand new topic. We're at the beginning of the year, so it's going to be meet the teacher and I'm going to add that item so now see here I have an unpublished meet the teacher discussion so now let's go in and edit those details so click edit and so now I can decide who am I going to um, assign this to I can give directions I'm going to show you all the details that I'm going to add in so for now, I'm going to put my directions in. Here are my directions. And again, just like all the other Canvas tutorials, this toolbar allows you to do so many things. You can insert links, you can um, put in images, videos. If you don't have audio or video ready, you can upload that or you can just record it right away and just start recording for audio or you can enable your webcam if you want to add on your webcam and so with that one thing some teachers do they'll put in a video here and then they will have their students discuss or respond to that video so that's an option for you if you want some teachers add in a thought-provoking image and so they'll have their students to closely read closely examine that image and then they will um, put their discussion parts below but for this, all I'm asking my students to do is just introduce themselves and then leave a comment on two of their classmates' posts, so two different students. So now I get to decide where do I want to post this to. It's my sandbox. I only have one course, but if I were teaching multiple courses this fall, I might want to add the same discussion to multiple courses because I need to get to know all of my students. And my topic is meet the teacher. Now, if I want to, I can choose a file to upload. I don't have to, but um, I'll show you what it looks like. So this takes you to your documents, and I'm going to click on Meet the Teacher. And so that Meet the Teacher document is here, and my students will be able to click on that and see what it looks like. And so moving down, you'll see the options. If you want to allow threaded replies, what this means is that if you don't have, if you don't change a thing, it's just one student replies. And then one student replies to the prompt. This is like the mother prompt. And then it's a bunch of individual isolated responses to that mother prompt. Okay. But if you allow threaded replies, then this means that students can reply to each other. And so in addition to having responses to the mother prompt, you're also going to have responses that are going to be to each other in the class. And so it's a huge discussion board. And so that I like to use that option because it allows my students to really get to talk to each other and share. And so depending on what type of activity you have, you may want students to post their own response before seeing everybody else's replies. And so this is really helpful for if you're going over um, content. And so um, you want to make sure that your students actually did the lesson they put in the work before they are responding. Otherwise, you have kids that just don't even do the work. 
read the assignment or the directions. They go straight to the comments and they read what everybody else said. And then their comment is, um, it's a mixture of what everybody else said. And before you know it, without having done any work at all, they get a great grade because they know how to play the system. So if you're watching this as a student, ignore what I just said. Don't try to cheat the system. Your teachers care about you. Just follow directions. Thank you. So one thing you can do as well, you can enable a podcast feed. And so if you do want your first graders listening to a podcast, cool, enable that, let them listen. Um, you can grade this, you can allow liking, and students can add um, different, you can add tasks for your students to do. Now, another feature is to cause it to be a group discussion. And so if you make this a group discussion, then you are going to have to figure out what group you want that to be. So you can split them into, for example, colors. And so orange group, kids can sign up for that group themselves, or you are able to um, put them into groups based on, for example, you know what their reading levels is, the reading levels are, they might not know that. But this is an example. And then if you want to assign a group leader, it'll automatically pick out of those people who is that group leader. But these are settings that you'll have to do um, on your own. And so if you want to create the groups manually, that's for if you want them strategically, if you want multi-level groups, or if you want um, groups that are homogenous, it is completely your choice. Or if you're like, ah, oh, I don't care, it's just a quick group discussion, get to know you, then you might wanna split the, split the students. And let's say that I wanna split my kids into six groups because um, that divides evenly with the amount of kids that I have. So what I could do is require those, group, those kids to be in the same class. So that way, um, with my group now, it's all the kids in math one, they're all in that same group. All the kids from science, they're all in the same group with each other versus having kids from math one mixed with kids from science, mixed with kids from honors English. It's just a big um, mix of kids. If you want that, that's cool, you can do that. But I just want you to be aware of what it is you're actually clicking. And so if that's something that you want to do, awesome, you can do that, automatically assign a group leader and um, we'll make it a random one and save. Now remember, this is my sandbox, so I don't really have any kids in there. So, um, but when you get your courses in the fall, you'll be able to do this, all right? So when is it available? We're gonna start this discussion today, and then we're gonna um, continue it on through the weekend, and we're gonna stop it on Monday. And I'm going to save and publish this discussion topic. And so now, this is a group discussion. I turn it into a group discussion. So now, everybody will have their own topic, okay? I'm the teacher, and so I have access to everybody's business. I'm all in everybody's stuff. But if you're my student, you're only going to be in Orange 1, for example. You might only be in Orange 6. And then you'll have your private group discussions, and then... um. As far as replying, if you want to reply to my prompt, you click here to reply. And then you'll see now my rich text editor pops up, and this is how I will reply. All right. And so you'll just type some random stuff, whatever your response is, and then you will post your reply. And now let's say that I want to respond to this, okay? So as I'm from a student view, if I'm looking at this, I can click reply here, and that's going to give me a response to that mother topic, the main topic. Or if I, as a student, I'm like, whoa, gibberish, OMG, I love gibberish. I want to comment back to you, gibberish, gibberish, gibberish. Then I can respond, and I'm only responding to this person. And so remember how I enabled threaded responses, this is that threaded response option. Because you see, that response is to me. It's not to the main post, that response is directly to me. So that just gives you kind of a look, an inside look into how to create a discussion and how to break it off into a group discussion if that's something that you want to do.
If this video helped you in any way, please click like on it, share it with your fellow teaching buddies, but then also subscribe, subscribe, subscribe so that you get access to all of my video tutorials.